I had a plan. Practice typing as fast as I could, 10 minutes a day for 30 days. Let's go. I was starting out in a strong position. I could already type without looking. It seemed like I was getting faster every day. But halfway through, I had to stop. Something was definitely wrong. Yes, I was typing faster, but my accuracy was getting worse. But the real problem was how I felt. It felt frantic. It felt stressful. And it felt like I had to pay extra attention to fixing my mistakes. Constantly checking what I'd already typed felt like it was crowding out my other thoughts. And that's when I realized something important. Typing faster would be great, but I needed a goal that was more aligned with what I actually wanted. But what did I actually want? What I really wanted was to minimize the distance between the thoughts in my head and the computer. Wait, that's not quite it. I wanted the thoughts in my head to flow to the computer as smoothly as possible. And since it felt like fixing my typos was causing mental friction, I made my new goal to type more accurately. So I finished my 30 day challenge with this new goal. My accuracy went up and I felt more calm and focused, which was a win. But as for my typing speed, it actually went up as well, and by a lot. So I increased both my speed and my accuracy. I spent some time thinking about this experience, and I think I've come up with an explanation that's actually more general and more important than simply typing faster. And it comes down to two concepts, procedural memory and active awareness. Active awareness is when you are consciously thinking about the activity that you're doing. Think about what it's like when you are just starting to learn to ride a bike. Procedural memory is when you can do the task without thinking like riding a bike once you know how. You're still aware of what's happening, but you can kind of do it on autopilot. So how does that relate to typing? Well, to illustrate, consider what has to go into the action of typing the word enough. E-N-O-U-G-H. Several tasks have to happen to have this word go from your head to the computer. I'll just list a few. First, you have to know how to spell, so you have to know what letter to type next. You have to know or find where each letter is on the keyboard. You then have to match the location of the letter to the location of your fingers. And finally, you have to check the computer screen to verify that you typed what you meant to type. Here's one way to classify different typing skill levels based on how many of these tasks you've pushed from your active awareness into your procedural memory. Level 1. A person who is just learning to type needs to actively search and find the letters on the keyboard. All of these skills remain in active awareness. Level 2. An experienced two-finger typist. For this person, locating the letters has been pushed down to the procedural memory. They know the layout of the keyboard, they know where the letters are, but they still have to look down at the keyboard to line up which finger types which letter. And so pressing the keys is still an active awareness. Level three, a touch typer who can type without looking has pushed both the location of the letters and which fingers type them into procedural memory, where this whole process happens at a level below active awareness. Typing has become like riding a bike. I think many people resist the advice to learn to touch type because they view it primarily as a means to increase the speed of entering text. Even if that's the primary benefit, if you're typing a novel, it's wonderful to have the words simply flowing from your fingertips. But I frequently heard programmers saying some version of, my coding speed is not constrained by my typing speed. Which is probably not true. But even if I were to grant it for the sake of argument, the true value of touch typing is that it removes a running process from your active awareness giving you less cluttered mental space. You might not be convinced yet, so let me show you what happened to me. I realized that when I noticed that I had made a mistake, it brought that word back into my active awareness to correct it. And this felt like the mental equivalent of a high-pitched beep. So let's go back to typing the word enough. Let's say that I mistyped it and I entered the word with hg instead of gh, so I have to go back and fix it. This feedback noise interrupts the process of getting my thoughts from my head into the computer. The thing I learned was that this internal background noise was always there whenever I made a mistake. Even before this challenge, I had just become used to it at my typical error rate. It took this challenge turning up the volume on that noise for me to be consciously aware of it. And really, just like any other annoying noise that's been playing for a while, you might not notice it, you might have gotten used to it, but if someone brings it to your attention. Once you hear it, it will bother you from then on. So how exactly do you turn down this noise? The prescription is actually pretty straightforward. I needed to get the question, did I type what I meant to type, pushed into procedural memory as much as possible. 
I wanted to approach level four, touch typing without errors. So as I've said, halfway through my challenge, I switched to focusing on my accuracy and it had a dramatic effect. At the end of each 10 minute session, I could feel that I was going to type exactly what I meant to type. It worked and I could feel the mental noise being turned down. And unexpectedly, this happened to bring my typing speed from the mid 80s word per minute to around 115 words per minute in just two weeks. I'll give you a quick overview of the most important recommendations here. And I'll provide a link to a free PDF if you want all the specific details if you want to go deeper. First things first, to figure out what level you are and work to the next level. If you don't know how to touch type, work on that first. If you can already touch type, but you want to drive your accuracy closer to 100%, I landed on the free typing website, monkeytype.com. This video is not sponsored, it's just what I found to work best for my situation. I did, however, change a number of the default settings. The most important changes I made were, first, turn on expert mode. This lets you type a word with a mistake, but if you don't fix it before you hit the space bar, you'll fail the test. So it's pretty strict. Then turn on the pacer cursor. I like the average of the last 10 runs. I found this gave me plenty of motivation to have some pressure to type faster. I recommend being able to complete a practice test in under a minute, so picking the timed option for 30 seconds would be a good start. Finally, I recommend limiting your practice sessions to a maximum of 10 minutes a day, but try to make this something that you do regularly. If you make these practice tests short enough, you can even make it part of a habit, like completing one successful practice test before checking your email. And remember, it's not about finishing what you were going to type just a few seconds faster. It's about clearing your mind from things that you have to actively think about so you can think with greater focus.